Hi everyone, welcome back to Hope and Coffee. I'm Hope, and I do have my coffee, even though I am slowly starting to winding down on drinking it, and I probably should switch to decaf because it is about 5.30 in the evening and I'm only just now noticing I thought it was still closer to 4.30, so uh, yeah, I probably should slow down. I just finished a therapy session not too long ago and my person is so lovely. She has been one of my sounding boards for probably a little over a year now and she has just been a fantastic resource in order to be able to lean on when I'm going through stuff. Heck, I um, she's probably seen me cry more than half the people in my life and she has called me on my bullshit more than a lot of people in my life but she does it in such a way that is really helpful in order for me to better able to process things and to help me work my way through situations that sometimes i don't know how to work through on my own and sometimes just me being able to say it out loud helps me to know maybe a little bit better about which path I'm already leaning towards because I'm having that open conversation with someone that I trust. Well, this is this was intended to be kind of a, like talking about therapy as a hobby. And I still might kind of talk about therapy as a hobby because I truly think you should approach therapy as something that is enjoyable. You should approach therapy as something that is benefiting you and that is a good thing and that it is okay to have that in your life as a, as a constant or as a persisting thing that you go to when you need some release. And a lot of people do that for their hobbies. They seek their hobby out for a certain type of release, whether it's watercolors or paint by numbers or things like that, or golf or a sport. It helps you take you out of your current hopeful mind, like your current mindset, hopefully, in order to be able to kind of clear your head and move on, move forward, maybe think about things differently, maybe go grab a drink with your buddies, what have you. But for me, I like to classify therapy as a hobby because it's not something that I actively like. I'm like, Honestly, yeah, I actually do. You know what? I'm like, yes, I'm going to therapy. I'm very excited to go to therapy. Why? Because those conversations are so enlightening. Like, I I enjoy my conversations with my therapist, no matter how hard they are. I am brutally honest with her about stuff. And she, sometimes she's like, dang, girl. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Like, I know. Like, these are the things that are going on in my life right now. And she's like, Let's talk about it. Let's talk about how we got here. And I'm like, okay. So, but the thing is, is therapy will only work if you actively want it to work. If you are actively open and honest with wanting it to work. And that's why I view it as a hobby. I view it as something I enjoy doing that I actively look forward to on the weeks that I have it. And I eagerly anticipate those hard conversations because I don't really know except one other person in my life that I can have a hard conversation with and know that at the end of that conversation, there's probably not going to be tears and stuff. Actually, with that person, the last time I had to have a hard conversation with them, I was bawling and they were trying to tell me, you know, it's okay to like, you know, feel these emotions and I'm like, dang, all right, well, you know, we're going to be okay. This is going to be an okay situation. But like, that's a, that's a safe place. My therapist office is a safe place for me. And it's hard to find those sometimes to feel like you don't have to walk on eggshells to feel like this person is not judging me. And heck, maybe they are. Maybe when I walk away, when I turn off that video camera, they are hopefully not breaking HIPAA laws, but they are hopefully not talking to their friends about this crazy girl that just had this whole spiel about the craziness going on in her life. Um, if she is, she's got some stories to tell and probably not just from me, but from the other people she is also therapizing. But 
I'm just saying that that is such a safe space for me. I look forward to going to that safe space. And I know some people, like, they utilize church in that way. That is their safe space. That is a place they feel comfort. Um, for me, it's my therapist's office. I'm, like, I will not apologize for finding that place to be one of the most comforting areas to be in. And one of the books and one of the people that she talked to me about was a psychologist and um, social worker, I believe, that's Masters in Social Work, I believe her name is uh, Brene Brown. And she has some TED Talks on YouTube. And this was not intended to be like a book review, but I did want to talk about this particular book. This book found me in a Target. I was walking through Target during um, January of 2023 of this year. And I was kind of going through some stuff, having to make some tough decisions and try to figure out what I was going to do with my life and how I was going to move forward to make better choices and um, what I was doing for me. And this book was staring me in the face, this bright red with gold, gold, I don't know if you can even see, but there, all of this is like shiny gold. And it was just staring at me. And I was like, my therapist just talked about this person. And I had just watched a TED talk about like trust, the anatomy of trust. And trust was so incredibly important because I was like, yeah, trust. Uh, I can tell why I don't trust people the way I wish I could. And like, it, it was just so enlightening. This book has given me such fantastic insight into not only my own motivations, but into other people's motivations. Because what it does, it's called Atlas of the Heart. And it's more like a t coffee table book rather than anything else. You can read it from cover to cover, like all the way straight through, but this is a book more about understanding 87 of the emotions and experiences that define what it means to be human. Uh, Brene Brown maps the necessary skills and actionable framework for meaningful connection. She gives us the language and tools to access a universe of new choices and second chances. A universe where we can share and steward the stories of our bravest and most heartbreaking moments with one another in a way that builds connection. And I have read probably, probably three-fourths of this book. I have not finished it completely because I felt like there were some of it I didn't need yet. And that's okay. You might not need all of it right now. You might want to save some of it for later. But I will say, if you wonder why people sometimes act the way they act, if you wonder why certain emotions cause people to do certain things, envy versus joy, or envy versus jealousy, um, this is a great book in order to like start exploring those things. Because I was so blown away that I actually did a podcast episode with my with my podcast um books are magical on this book for May for mental health awareness month now I don't believe we've actually released it yet because we had a lot of content for May but as soon as that episode comes out please be on the lookout for it because we do talk about some of the content of this particular book and just some of the ways that we felt, like especially me, the ways I felt, it, I guess, I guess it connected with me through my life and through different things that I was going through or how people were reacting to me and various things like that. So I hope you'll give Brene Brown a chance. I hope if you do not know if you want therapy or not, that's okay. You don't have to. You can be in a totally safe space and be totally fine, and that's great too. Some of us aren't. According to this book, at least a third of humans in America, a third of Americans, suffer with some sort of anxiety and depression. And at least half of that third do not seek treatment. So please don't be a statistic of a person that's like, I don't need therapy, but you're just avoiding it. Please. 
Love yourself as much as I love you. And I'll see you on the next page.